Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title of the video and the thumbnail, we are going over this optic today. So this is the 1 to 8 Match Precision Optics from Brownells, MPO series, if you will. Uh, so I did review their 5 to 25 a while back, and I've actually had this one since it came out. So I've had this one in for probably two years now and have fired literally thousands and thousands of rounds through different rifles that it has been on. I'm not sure what footage I'll uh, pull for the review, but you guys who follow me on social media have seen it a lot over the last couple of years. So uh, basically, what is it? Well, it's their premium line of optics. And this one here has the uh, Nomar reticle or the CQ Nomar reticle, which we'll get into in great detail. And they also offer it with a duplex reticle for folks who like that. I'm not really sure why you would ever go with a duplex over any reticle that gives you more information than a duplex. But that's just my personal opinion. I know there are folks out there who like the duplex, though. So with that uh, caveat aside, uh, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is the folks at the Sonoran Desert Institute, or SDI. Uh, you can check them out at sdi.edu, and they offer an online uh, course structure that gives you the ability to earn a degree if you want to and basically it's focused on the firearms industry so different classes on things like turning a barrel gunsmithing uh, building holsters to running a gun shop owning a small business all of those sorts of things that will prepare you to enter into the a job rather in the firearms community so uh, if you guys are interested in that definitely check them out additionally they do uh, take GI Bill uh, credits so if you guys have those if you're veterans definitely check them out now with that let's get up close and personal here on this scope getting into the scope we'll start here at the rear and sort of work our way forward in terms of the details so first thing you'll notice is that we do have our fast focus eyepiece and it has good knurling on there to allow it to be used easily if you're wearing gloves or if it's really hot out and your hands are sweaty and those sorts of things so what this does for folks that are new is it allows you to focus the reticle to your eye um, everyone's eyesight is different the way you see whether it be nearsighted farsighted uh, different astigmatisms etc it allows it to to set to your eye and as you can see it's not easily spinning uh, there are ones that I've used that are stiffer and there are definitely lots that I've used that are looser you don't want it to be loose because you don't want it to be bumped off of where you set it but basically you just look up in the sky is what I recommend doing and just play with the settings look up in the blue sky and then wherever it's the clearest to your eye just leave it there and drive on. Uh, continuing on forward, we do have our integral throw lever. And just noting positions, this is the one o'clock position where the throw lever is. And then the eight o'clock position is right across. It's basically 180 degree throw uh, for that. I should mention it is a second focal plane uh, scope. So that will have implications as we get into the reticle changing as we move throughout and not changing versus a one uh, first focal plane rather. Uh, but the throw lever is good. Uh, it's got good knurling on there you can definitely grab it i like the sort of bell shape of it because your finger just kind of goes into it naturally um, easy to throw no issues with that most folks generally speaking are going to use a, a one power or eight power i know there's some competitive shooters out there who like to use like a two three so if you want to do that you can and like i said it's got good friction on there um, when you're actually turning it so it's not going to get bumped off accidentally and one thing i like to just for me personally um, is that the geese are going crazy is that uh, on the one setting as a right-handed shooter the actual lever here is off to the right uh, you know, if you're using it for any type of self-defense and you're slung up, um, that's kind of where you want it. You don't want it getting bumped out of the way and it won't in that position. Um, if you're left-handed, well, then you're just out of luck. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's very unlikely that it's going to get bumped regardless, but it can happen. It's possible. Um, so continuing on forward, we do have a 30 millimeter body. So that is advantageous for uh, scope mounting. There are, of course, plenty of options for 34 millimeter uh you know scope mounts at this point but there's definitely more for 30 millimeters so it makes it just very easy to do and i should note that brown Isles does at least as of when i'm recording this right now offer a package combo with one of their scope mounts i don't think that was available at the time when i actually uh, got this one though so our turrets are capped which is my preference for uh, willpower variable optic i know there are folks that want you know, dialable turrets, lockable turrets, all those sorts of things. And that's cool. Uh, if that's you, this probably isn't the one for you. Um, but I do have a one MRAD adjustment, which I do like a 0.01, I should add uh, adjustment. So in terms of, you know, dialing in, getting your zero, absolutely correct. You're going to be able to do that with this scope. Additionally, the clicks 
are very tactile. They're not all that audible, but you definitely know when you're spinning it. And of course it does have the little tick mark there to let you know where your actual like zero is, if you will. Um, it doesn't have a zero stop on there. So being a, a MRAD scope, I'm sure there are some of you guys out there who are gonna take this cap off, probably not so much your windage, uh, and, and shoot like that and just dial for elevation, which you absolutely can do. Um, and it does tell you again, where that zero point is looking at it. It doesn't have a physical stop though, at least that I am aware of the windage is the same uh, no difference there in terms of that and one thing I wish it would do is I will say this on various scope reviews on the body here for the windage and the elevation if it just had an arrow for like left or right uh, so that way when you're actually on the scope and you're you know either if you're dialing for example you know which way you're dialing without having to move your head up and around on the optic um, but that is a nitpicky um, thing. Again, most folks are going to set it and leave it, which is what I personally would do. And then additionally, we'll turn this guy around here. You guys should be able to get a look there at our elevation. So of course it works on a C, it's not elevation, illumination, if I could talk right. So this takes a CR2032 battery. So pretty standard in that regard. And it has stopping points at the in-between which i like so it has one to six in terms of settings it doesn't have any night vision settings um, but in between each setting there's a little point that's a hard stop which again it's relatively difficult to turn that knob yeah, but it has good knurling on there so you can grab it um, but it allows you to be right at the high end if you want to or if it's like low light shooting that you're doing and you want to be on the low end like between one and two you can just be right in the middle and then turn it when you need it and then turn it back off to have uh, no illumination when you don't need it. I should note that it is a glass etched reticle, meaning that anytime it's usable, there's no you know issues with not being able to see it clearly if it's not illuminated, etc. So the majority of the time when I use scopes like that, I know everybody's a little bit different. Uh, you do, I rather I do not actually use the illumination, but on this one, uh, we'll probably roll in photos, but to just to try to describe it. It's absolutely visible when it's on for sure, um, but is it quote unquote daylight bright like a red dot? No, it's not. But in low light conditions, so like if you're a hunter, typically your shots are going to be, you know, right around dusk and dawn. In those conditions, it's absolutely usable in every way. And even in the conditions I'm shooting in right now, it's perfectly visible to my eye. Now it's time to get into the actual reticle itself. Like I mentioned earlier, it is called the CQNOMR. So on their uh, 3 to 18 and 5 to 25, they have a standard Christmas tree type of grid. This is based on the same exact reticle. However, they took the grid away. Um, so right there in the center, when it is on eight power, and once again, it's the second focal plane scope. So for any of these uh, amounts that I'm talking about here, it has to be on the actual eight power setting or else it will be slightly different in terms of mathematics. So in the center, you have a 0.25 MOA dot that is, of course, illuminated. In terms of illumination, one thing to note is that there is a little bit of bleed on this one if you get into the 5 and 6, uh, basically meaning that instead of just illuminating the dot itself, it kind of starts to illuminate the rest of the reticle, um, but not bad. There's worse, but it is there, just noting that for folks who are concerned with that. So uh, basically, the vertical and windage line are hollowed out. So what that allows you to do is see in between them as you go down or left or right. So I think that is a good feature of the scope. I do like that. Um, additionally, the actual tick marks themselves, the even numbers are labeled. Again, I do like that because just like you can get lost in your uh, rings if you're dialing, you can also get lost in a reticle very quickly under stress. Uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> so, so there's that. It's absolutely possible and I like the markings that they do have on there. And of course, the actual uh, tick marks themselves, the longer ones, are 0.75 uh, MOA. If that is interesting to you for any type of you know measurement that you're taking, and then the actual uh, steady lines themselves on the left and right in on the outside of the hollow points, uh, hollowed out point rather I should say, are 0.1 MRAD. So uh, it does give you the ability to mill down to 0.1 MRAD. Are you going to do that with a low power variable scope? Probably not, but it does give you the option to do so. Additionally, where you have the two, four, six, eight, 10, etc., cetera marks, uh, those are of course the labeled ones. You have the in-between ones that is gonna be the three, five, seven, etc. And in between that, you have the half marks as well. So that way you can have half mil increments on your holding points. Now with the removal, 
of the windage holds, you don't really have any windage holds. I suppose at two, four, and maybe even six, you can kind of use the outside of those dots for different wind holds, but it's kind of leaving you hanging and you will be holding out in space if you're shooting at distance. It's something to keep in mind. Me personally, I would have liked to see if they're going to take away the Christmas tree, which I get why they do that. I understand why they wanted to do that on an LPVO. I would definitely like to see at least some dots out there that you can reference uh, for your misses um, because I shoot in a really windy field about half the year. And uh, trust me, it would have come in, uh, come in handy if they had it, but they don't. So that is the reticle. Now that we have the reticle out of the way, there's a few other things I want to touch on here before we close the video out. Uh, first and foremost, it is made in Japan. I know a lot of folks like that. It is made at the JOL plant. Uh, from everything I can tell, nobody told me that, but just doing a little bit of uh, internet sleuthing around, you can pretty well guess that that is an accurate statement. And it's advertised to have ED glass or ultra low dispersion glass. So you'll hear different terms thrown about when it comes to glass quality, particularly in scopes in this range. Uh, you'll see HD glass, ultra HD glass, um, etc. Anyway, uh, what uh, ultra low dispersion glass is designed to like sort of focus on, if you will, the reason people go with it is that it's designed to minimize chromatic aberration. So um, if you're looking through a scope, particularly as you crank the magnification up, what you'll start to see on all scope, well, not all scopes, almost all scopes, is you'll start to see on the edges of it, you'll start to see the colors really shifting and it's sort of like blending in uh, the colors on the edges of the scope, uh, and that is chromatic aberration. It, there's a way more complicated way to explain that, but basically at the user level, that's what you see. And ED glass does an excellent job of minimizing that. So uh, that's what Brownells chose to go with for the glass on this one. And I think it's a good choice uh, because for a lot of people, that's something that just annoys them when they're shooting. Um, it doesn't actually matter in terms of hitting the target, but in terms of experience wise as a shooter, uh, you want to see clarity and you don't want to see distortion when you're looking through your optic, right? That's just normal. And this glass absolutely does it. Again, I've probably rolled photos in here, but I am the worst person on the planet who does this professionally at taking photos of reticles. I'm just not good at it. Um, so don't take my photos to be a representation of what it actually looks like when you're shooting, because of course my photos are going through uh, the camera lens, my focusing of it, which that alone is rough, and then your computer screen, and then uh, also some processing software when I'm editing the video. So it's really not a good uh, way to think of it, but it has good glass, especially for the price point. So price point on this one right now, as of when I'm filming this, again, is $799. And again, it's very competitive with other quality Japanese one to eight scopes out there on the market. One area where it's gonna be behind some of those designs, at least in my opinion, and you can look at it both ways. I suppose we'll discuss that, but one area where it's going to be behind is going to be the weight. So it's 24.8 ounces with no mount. And there are competitive options out there that are going to be about 19 to 22 ounces. And, you know, ounces add up. And so there's also heavier options out there as well. So it's a little bit on the heavy side, particularly for, again, something in this price range that's giving you the features that it's given. Um, that is definitely going to be one of the cons. You can also look at it as that it's more rugged, which is probably true. Um, most folks will never get to the point where that will matter to them, but just know that it, that is a feature of it as well. Of course, speaking of rugged, it has Brownells lifetime warranty. So literally Brownells ain't going anywhere. They've been around a long time. They're going to be around a lot longer. So at any point, if you ever have any issues with it at all, uh, Brownells will replace it, fix it, make it right, whatever the case may be. And that's awesome. So good on them for that. Full disclosure, Brownells did send this out for review. I should mention that. Um, and the other thing that I think really kind of is a, I guess a con, in my personal opinion, we already touched on, is going to be the reticle. So I like wind hold, man, I really do. Particularly when you get over like four power, it really starts to matter. Um, but it does, again, give you the mills out there. So you can, as you're looking at the reticle, you know, you have your cross, right? You can pick a spot here and hold between like two mils right, four mils down, right? I get it. And you do have reference points there. Um, so that way when you see your splash versus where you're holding, you have some point of adjustment, but I really do think something out there, hash marks, whatever the case may be, would be helpful for me as a shooter. Other people I know are gonna disagree with what I just said, and they like the crosshair style reticle. I get it with a little bit of milling information. So it's a preference thing. I do get it, but I also shoot in a windy field. <laughs> so there's that. Um, other than that, it's been a fantastic product. Like I said, it's had thousands of rounds through it. 
have had absolutely zero issues of any kind with any functionality issues on the actual scope itself. It works as intended. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, you can also post those down below in the comment section. Uh, you can also post down at my various social media pages. Two of those have recently changed due to getting zucked. So if you guys haven't checked in a little bit and you guys follow me on social media, make sure you follow me at the right places. Um, additionally, if you like this video and you're not seeing two to four videos a week and you're subscribed to the channel, uh, and hit the notification bells, hopefully, then you are being kept away from my content by an algorithm. So the way to combat that is to sign up for my email list at the website here on your screen. This email list goes out at most once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous month's email went out. So that way you guys don't get censored uh, from my content. It goes straight to you from me. So again, they can't do anything about it. If it's up, it will go out in email. Additionally, if this thing goes on sale, codes, anything like that, it will be in my daily deals email that you can sign up for at the website here on your screen. It has all of the uh, best deals that I find around the internet, six or seven of them anyway, uh, that particular day. And if it's in that email, it's the cheapest that I know of anywhere on the internet. So that way it'll save you guys some time because you don't have to do the looking and hopefully save you some money on the items as well. And it's guns, gear, uh, accessories, all of those sorts of things. Ammo will be in there. So with that, we will close the video out. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.